Hello and welcome to this Christ the King weekend. Glad that you're able to be worshiping with us. Just a couple of announcements before we begin. One is, is that this coming Wednesday, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, we will be having a Thanksgiving Eve worship service. And we will have a chance to do that at 6.30 in person, or you can watch us on live stream with that as well. And so please join us. If you're able to be with us in person, you might even get a cookie to go. We'd love to do the pie piece, but we're going to hold off on that yet again this year. Also, just a quick reminder, too, that we continue with our Adopt-A-Family Ministries. If you want to adopt a family or a person for Christmas, uh, that is welcome. There's a table out in the gathering area. If you have specific questions, you may talk to Pastor Tina. And also, you might remember that last weekend was uh, Giving Sunday. If you have not had a chance to fill out your pledge card or your giving card, please um, feel free to turn those in. We do have some out in the gathering area, and you can put those in one of the black offering boxes or hand it to one of the staff or mail it in. We very much welcome that yet. And also, tomorrow, uh, in between services, we're going to be having a Bible study on gratitude with Pastor Tina and I. We'd love to have you come and be a part of that. And also, something that we're going to be doing uh, this Advent, uh, on Wednesdays at 6.30, we're going to be premiering just a brief, maybe five or six minute Advent reflection devotion that you can um, watch that will be recorded uh, from Pastor Tina and I. So we'd love to have you be a part of that. And also a friendly reminder, also a lot of announcements I know, December 5th, annual meeting, 9.30 a.m. And we're asking that you please come and to be a part of that. Uh, because there's a, there's a lot of things uh, voting on new council folks, but also a few other things on the agenda as well that will be there. So we look forward to your presence and to your input for that. With those being our announcements, we're going to begin our service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our prayer of confession. Oh God, sometimes for that which we want to pray is buried so deep within us, mired in fear, sunk in embarrassment, wedged in sorrow, that we cannot find and form words to convey it. For some of us, the subject about which we long to speak to you is wrapped in so much hurt that to give words to it seems to be more painful than we can stand. Dear God, you have promised that when we cannot voice our prayers, you will understand our pain groans, our deep sighs, and even our silence. So look into our souls, God. Please sense the tremors of our spirits. Touch the turbulence of our thoughts. Listen to our silence. Interpret the emptiness of the space where ordinarily words fit. And know that the reality of our lives that exist beyond where words form. Hear our prayers, O God. Amen. Our opening hymn.
will now continue with our call to worship. Our hearts are glad, our bodies secure, our souls rejoice. We bless you, O God. You, O God, show us the path of life and grant us the pleasures of living. We worship you, God, and sing your praises now and forever. Let us share together the prayer of the day. Let us pray together. A bit of bread and a bit of wine, a small blessing and the invocation of the Holy Spirit. And the next thing we know is we are standing on holy ground, eating at a holy table, communing with Christ, our King. This is not magic as so much as depth, not mysterious as so much as normal. Life is food at the table with our Lord. A simple meal is a holy meal. A holy meal is a simple meal. We are one with each other at this table and one with God. Amen. We'll now continue with our readings. To the community for whom this passage was written, it seemed as though the oppression they were experiencing would never end. Daniel's message is, It shall end. The ancient one who is judged will call all nations to account and will give dominion to one like a human being, the Messiah. The first lesson is from the seventh chapter of Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne fiery flames, and his wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night vision, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the ancient one and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. This ends the lesson. introduction to our gospel lesson. 
In John's Gospel, the story of Jesus and Pilate presents two different ways of exercising power, through force and with love. The Gospel lesson is from the 18th chapter of Mark. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my fathers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are the, a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king for that. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This ends the gospel. Okay, at this time, I'm going to ask our children to please come forward if you can. And you can sit on your mom or dad's lap on whatever device it is that they're watching from, or TV or laptop or phone or whatever it is. Because I want to take a few moments and talk to you about a word that's called a king. I'm sure some of you might have heard the word king or maybe read about a king in one of your storybooks or something like that. Um, well, this weekend is Christ the King Sunday at church. And Jesus is our king. And you know what, though? But Jesus wasn't one to wear a crown with diamonds and jewels in it and all the fancy gold and had a big chair. He, that wasn't the kind of king Jesus was. And usually when somebody has a crown on, they expect it to get treated special and to be treated differently and have everybody wait on them and do whatever they want. And Jesus said, um, that's not what I'm about. I'm about being a king that heals other people. I'm a king that does service for other people and feeds other people and listens to other people who are sad. And, and so Jesus was saying, you know what? A, a kingdom and a king doesn't have to be somebody with a crown that ha exercises all this power and gets their way and whatever they want. And Jesus like, no, we got to be concerned about people. And we do that with love and humility and a servant heart. And so as followers of Jesus, we don't need a crown to let people know that we follow King Jesus. We just need our actions of love, of humility, of service, and to help feed people and to listen to people who are sad and all those things. Then people will know then that Jesus is our King. And that's way better than a whopper. Thanks so much for coming up and have a great day. Okay, big people, here we go. This has been a really long week and I've just been trying to just really think about what could I possibly talk to you about Christ the King Sunday. And you know, king is kind of a foreign word for us. I mean, it's not like we live in a kingdom and there's a king and a queen and a prince and the happily ever after and the frog that gets kissed or whatever, you know, kind of thing. But so king, kingship is kind of a weird concept for us. You know, I mean, we hear the word king. I mean, there's the Sacramento Kings, that's an NBA basketball team. There's Los Angeles Kings, that's an NHL hockey team. There is the king on a chessboard. There's King's Corners, the card game. There is King Walk, if you want some kind of food, or in King's Barbershop, both up in Green Bay as well as down in Milwaukee. I mean, we hear the word king a lot. And yet, um, that concept of king that Jesus is talking about with Pilate makes it a little more challenging for us because, you know, um, even in Jesus' day and in biblical times, you know, Israel, man, they wanted a king. They kept going back and trying to get a king that would set things right for them. And, you know, and many times it went just not good. And so here's Jesus being arrested because why? 
those with power, those who have a certain level of kingship in some way, want to maintain that power and control to continue to set the ideologies and everything else of the people. And so what happens is, is that, you know, Pilate begins questioning Jesus. And don't let Pilate off the hook that easy, okay? Because his questioning is a little biased, if you really look at it. And he's kind of playing along with the corruption that is going on. And that also happens when people want to maintain power. They'll do it sometimes at all costs, even if it means being corrupt to do it. And that's what was going on uh, in Jesus' day when Jesus got arrested. And on that night was before Pilate. And so Pilate and he are having this exchange about, you know, kingship. Well, are you the king of the Jews? And this conversation is going back and forth. And again, Pilate, on some levels, was a king of society. I mean, he wasn't King Pilate, I get that, but I mean, he had a fair amount of power and prestige and authority. And so from a societal perspective, Pilate's kingship was by force and law and army, and army folks, you know? And Jesus begins talking about a different kingship. And what I want to lift up today is that, you know what? Jesus was a servant king. You know that. Instead of riding into Jerusalem on a gold chariot, he rode it on a donkey. Instead of having an innate uh, uh, crown with jewels and diamonds and all that kind of stuff, Jesus had a crown of thorns. And we know what happened that Holy Week and that Good Friday. King Jesus continued to serve the night before his hanging from the cross. And even hanging from the cross, he served his kingdom. And even on Easter Sunday, when he was risen, he continued to serve and honor his kingdom and the people in it. Following King Jesus and the servant kingship is countercultural. I don't know if you've ever tried walking upstream. I know when the girls were little and we'd have inner tubes in a stream or something like that, and that they'd get away and I'd have to go way downstream to get them and then walk back up. I suppose I could have gotten off on the land and gone back to where they were, but you know, dad's trudging up back upstream, and you know, that takes a little more work. It's a little bit harder. And that's how it is following. A, a servant king lifestyle because it's going against the grain of society against the current of society that's saying win at all cost you know no matter what happens win at all cost maintain the power and the control and yet here is King Jesus offering a different model that Pilate was understanding the religious Authorities who wanted Jesus arrested, they weren't understanding. And sometimes we don't even always understand, yet even today. I want to encourage us on this Christ the King weekend to follow our servant king. To follow our servant king in a big way. In ways that would be pleasing to give him glory. Our servant king, remember, fed people. Our servant king washed people's feet. Our servant king healed people. Our servant king listened to people. Our servant king helped the crippled walk and the blind see. Our servant king even reminded a prostitute and a tax collector of their true identity. They aren't what they do. That's not how God made them. Their true identity is as sons and daughters of King Jesus. And their lives were renewed because of that. We have a chance to be a part of the Servant King movement. It's not easy. But together we can do it. 
We can speak truth. We can speak love. We can show humility. We can live in grace and spill it over to others. And we can be signs of peace by our words and our actions. King Jesus is Lord. Ready to serve? Amen. Let's confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Let us pray. Most holy God, we praise you for creating the world we know. We thank you for stamping your image upon us, for endowing us with minds to ponder your will and hearts that are restless until they find rest in loving obedience to you. We give you thanks for providing for all, our, all, all of our real needs, material and spiritual, and above all, for granting us in your divine Son a model of a life lived with you. We pray for all in need of healing and comfort, especially Chris and Amira and Gary and Dan and Jeff, for James and Lori and Helen. We pray for Debbie and Ruth and Bill, and for John and Jim, for Paul and Jill. We pray for John and Bill. We pray for Vicki and Becky, and for Sandy and Mary, and for Rosen and Aaron. 
We pray for Berta and Marion and Jerry, for Rosemary, Steve, Jane, Kelsey, Patricia. We pray for Micah and Ben, for Wayne and Julie, for Shelly and Pat, for Jerry and for Marion. We pray for John Harms and his family at the passing of his sister Mary. We also pray for the family of Arlene Hockey at her passing as well and pray for her family. Continue to bring hope to those suffering and broken. Around this table, we have gathered to recall and to celebrate Jesus' life. We remember his touchingly humble birth, his youthful wisdom, his loyalty to his family, his devotion to his disciples, his compassion for all of them, even Judas. We remember the brilliance of his teachings, his calm in crisis, his generosity towards his enemies. We remember with sorrow and awe his courage before his judges, his forgiveness extended even to his executioners, and the victory with which you rewarded him when you raised him from death on the third day. We pray now for the gift of your Holy Spirit to empower us in the celebration of the sacrament of his presence, then, now, and at the return of his glory. Let this common bread and this fruit of the lowly vine become for us reminders of his broken body and spilled blood as our King. So let us approach his table that we may experience his mercy and his love. We pray in his gracious name. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask that you get your communion elements together because we'll be getting ready to have communion. And what we're going to do is I will start us off with the great Thanksgiving. We'll take a brief pause or interlude and you'll be able to read the words of institution and the Lord's Prayer on your screen. And then uh, you may commune yourself and your family, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. And then we will gather back together and I will do the post communion blessing and benediction. So let us begin with the great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise.
We will now continue with our post-communion blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace from this time forth forevermore. Amen. Our closing benediction. Give our needs a workout, King Jesus, and humble us. Let gratitude for the gift of a holy meal and its powerful symbols penetrate our lives. Let us leave our sin and our hunger behind and remember that we are the people of your table people ready to be sure that everyone is fed. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.